Welcome to Heartbreaker. Your love radio. On an autumn afternoon, under the golden light that only this season can draw, Sophia met William for the first time. It was a company event where she had recently started working and William was a guest of honor, a man successful in his field. He stood there, by a tall window, his profile silhouetted against the soft orange of the dusk. You seem very thoughtful. May I know what goes through the mind of someone who observes the world with such intensity? William asked, breaking the silence with a voice that carried the confidence of someone who had lived multiple lives. Sophia, slightly surprised, smiled and replied, I was just thinking about how the end of the day can make the world seem like a completely different place, almost as if we could start over. That was the beginning of everything. William, almost 30 years her senior, never seemed to see age as a barrier. Instead, he saw Sophia as the embodiment of youth and vigor that he so admired. And Sophia, for her part, found William's maturity and wisdom something that brought her a sense of security and admiration. And never let the extra years make you think we have less in common, William said in one of their many long conversations as they walked together through a park, watching the leaves fall in a colorful carpet under their feet. I, I don't care what others think, as Sophia stated, holding his hand more firmly. A what we have is rare and precious. They married a year after that first meeting in a small and intimate ceremony, surrounded only by close friends and family who supported their love unconditionally. Even so, the skewed looks and whispers could not be completely avoided. During the reception, a distant cousin commented in a barely hidden whisper, she's so young, he could be her father. William, always the gentleman, simply squeezed Sophia's hand tighter and said loudly enough for everyone to hear, true wisdom is not in judging appearances, but in celebrating love in all its forms. I am happier now than I have ever been in my entire life. Married life was a journey of joy and mutual discoveries. Sophia never tired of hearing the stories William had to tell about the places he had visited and the lessons he had learned over the years. In turn, William delighted in the energy and passion that Sophia brought to his life. Being with you makes me feel like I still have so much to live for, he told her one quiet night, watching the starry sky from the backyard of their new home. Uh, with you by my side, Sophia whispered back, I feel like we can face anything. And so, despite the challenges and the criticism, Sophia and William built a life filled with understanding and mutual respect, firmly anchored in a love that defied conventions and celebrated the union of two souls truly meant for each other. On a day that began like any other, Sophia suddenly found herself thrown into the midst of a whirlwind of fear and uncertainty. William, always so vigorous despite his age, collapsed on the kitchen floor while having his morning coffee. The sound of the breaking cup was a grim harbinger of what was to come. A William, talk to me, please. Sophia cried out, kneeling beside him, her heart beating out of sync with the eerie quiet that had fallen over him. At the hospital, the doctors confirmed the feared diagnosis, a stroke. While William was unconscious, Sophia spent the days by his bedside, holding his cold hand, silently pleading for his recovery. You have to come back to me, William. Don't leave me here alone, she whispered night after night. After agonizing days, William finally woke up, but the doctors were cautious in their predictions. He will need a lot of help and patience. Recovery from a stroke can be slow and require a lot of support, the neurologist explained, his eyes filled with professional sympathy. Back at home, Sophia tried to adjust to the new reality. William, previously so independent, now depended on her for the most basic tasks. Exhaustion quickly began to accumulate, and with it, the weight of responsibility. I don't know if I can do this alone, as Sophia admitted one night, tears streaming freely as she spoke with a friend on the phone. He needs more help than I can provide. It was then that the decision to hire professional help became inevitable. However, the idea of bringing a nurse into their home made Sophia uncomfortable, jealousy simmering beneath the surface of her fatigue. I can't have another woman here, every day, so close to him. I know it sounds silly, but I just can't, she confessed to William, who listened with difficulty but understood the essence of her concerns. Then we'll find a man to help, a William said with effort, his voice weak but determined. As someone who can take care of me without making you feel insecure. That's important to me too, Sophia. With this new plan, they hired Thomas, a nursing technician recommended by an acquaintance. 
On the day Thomas arrived for the interview, his imposing presence could have intimidated anyone, but his kindness and professionalism quickly won over both Sophia and William. Thomas's arrival at Sophia and William's home marked a new chapter in their lives, filled with expectations and apprehensions. The man who crossed the threshold of their door that sunny morning was not only large in stature but also seemed to carry a serenity that filled the room. Uh, my name is Thomas, it's a pleasure to meet you, he said with a soft voice that contrasted with his robust appearance. He extended a large, firm hand to Sophia, who shook it, feeling an inexplicable sense of security from his grip. Sophia led Thomas to the living room where William was sitting, covered by a light blanket. William, whose health was fragile, observed with an evaluative gaze, but his eyes sparkled with interest at the confidence Thomas exuded. You seem strong enough to help with some of the more physical tasks around here, William commented, trying not to show the difficulty he had speaking. Of course, Mr. William. I have experience with many types of care, and I'm here to help with whatever is needed, Thomas replied, with an encouraging smile. You will be in good hands, Thomas assured with a calm smile, looking into Sophia's eyes with a confidence she did not expect to find. I will take care of him as if he were my own family. Sophia watched the interaction, feeling a mix of relief and anxiety. Uh, we need someone who is patient and understanding. William is recovering and each day might be different from the last. I understand perfectly, Thomas affirmed, nodding his head. Recovery after a stroke can be unpredictable and I am prepared to adapt the care as needed for Mr. William. After the initial conversation, Thomas began to ask specific questions about William's routine, his medications, and his rehabilitation exercises. Sophia answered, impressed by the level of detail and the knowledge that Thomas demonstrated. It's important we maintain a routine, but we must also be ready to make adjustments when necessary. I will ensure that Mr. William feels comfortable and safe, said Thomas, as he took some notes in his notebook. William, normally a man of few words since his stroke, nodded in approval, clearly pleased with the choice of Thomas as his caregiver. When Thomas turned to leave the room and start his first day of work, Sophia followed him to the door. I really hope this works, she said, her voice laden with cautious hope. Uh, and I need to believe it, because there is no other option, as Sophia said, her decision clear in her voice, even though her heart was still heavy with the burden of what was to come. You're doing everything you can, and now I'm here to help, Thomas responded, looking directly into Sophia's eyes. Don't worry, we'll make sure he gets better together. Thomas's confidence was contagious, and for a moment, Sophia felt a weight being lifted off her shoulders. She knew the days ahead would still be difficult, but Thomas's presence brought a new element of support that she desperately needed. Returning to the room, Sophia looked at William, who was watching Thomas arrange some medical supplies. There was a glimmer of hope in William's eyes, a sign that perhaps things might really start to improve. With Thomas by her side, Sophia felt that they could face the day-to-day -day challenges with a new strength, a shared strength that seemed to promise better days ahead. The weeks following Thomas's arrival were a mix of relief and new adjustments. Sophia saw Williams progress each day, still slow but steady, under Thomas's attentive care. She was grateful, but a strange feeling began to nestle at the bottom of her heart. One day, as Thomas was arranging William's medications, he commented to Sophia, You know, I really admire what you do for your husband. Not everyone would have the dedication that you have. Sophia, surprised by the compliment, felt her cheeks blush. Hey oh, I thank you, Thomas. It's just love, I guess. We do anything for love, don't we? Ah, absolutely, Thomas agreed with a smile. It's rare to see a love like yours. That conversation echoed in Sophia's mind in the days that followed. She began to notice more closely how Thomas cared for William. There was a kindness in his actions, a care that went beyond professional. It was something that, in some way, began to unexpectedly stir her. The following week, while Thomas was assisting William with some physiotherapy exercises, Sophia watched from a distance. You are improving every day, Mr. William. It's inspiring to see your strength, Thomas said encouragingly. Thank you, Thomas. I wouldn't be making such progress without your help, and Sophia's, of course, William replied, casting a loving glance towards Sophia. 
Later that day, as Thomas was preparing a snack for William, Sophia approached and spoke, trying to understand her own feelings. Thomas, do you really think he will fully recover? Thomas stopped for a moment, looking at her seriously. I believe so, Sophia. He has a lot of willpower, and the support you give is incredible. I've seen many cases, and love can work miracles. There was a loaded silence between them, a moment when Sophia felt something deeper forming. She found herself admiring not just Thomas's competence, but the way he genuinely seemed to care about William's well-being. Thank you, Thomas, that means a lot to me, is Sophia said, her voice low, a slight tremor in her words. Thomas just nodded, offering her a comforting smile, and continued his work. In the days that followed, Sophia found herself increasingly aware of Thomas's presence. The simple sound of his voice, the warm laughter he shared with William, even the way the muscles of his arms moved when he helped William stand, everything seemed to intensify the sensation that something was changing inside her. It was a quiet afternoon when Thomas, after helping William to bed, sat down next to Sophia in the garden. Uh, how are you feeling about all this, Sophia? It's not easy, I know. Sophia looked at him, her eyes laden with an emotion not fully understood. Gaim, Manedin, I guess. It's hard, but having you here helps. You're not only taking care of William, but somehow, you're also helping me keep my sanity. Thomas smiled gently, oh, we're in this together, Sophia. I'll be here as long as you need me. At that moment, Sophia realized how important Thomas's simple presence had become to her, not just as support for William, but as an unexpected comfort to her own turbulent heart. And with that realization, a new emotional chapter began to unfold in her life. Weeks turned into months, and the closeness between Sophia and Thomas grew in intensity. The house, once a place of recovery and care, now also harbored a tense silence filled with unspoken emotions. One evening, while William rested upstairs, Sophia and Thomas found themselves alone in the kitchen, preparing dinner. The atmosphere between them was different, charged with a palpable electricity. Thomas chopped vegetables with precise movements, each action seeming choreographed and aware. You've been quiet today, Sophia. Is everything all right? Thomas asked, breaking the silence that stretched between them. Sophia hesitated, her hand pausing over the salad she was preparing. Ah uh, yes. I'm just thinking about everything you know. The past few months, the changes. Her voice trailed off into a whisper. Thomas put the knife aside, dried his hands, and approached her. Uh. Sophia, if there's something you need to say, or if something is weighing on your heart, you can tell me. We're in this together, remember? She looked at him, her eyes filled with palpable conflict. I... I just don't know how to deal with what I'm feeling. It's too complicated, and I'm afraid of making things even more complicated. Thomas took her hand, a simple gesture but loaded with meaning. As sometimes, the heart doesn't choose the ideal time or situation to feel. And despite everything, we can't ignore what's happening between us. The touch of their hands sent a shiver down Sophia's spine. It was a feeling she had suppressed for weeks, but now it seemed to demand attention. I don't want to hurt William. He doesn't deserve this. I know, Thomas agreed softly. And I never wanted you to be in this position. But, Sophia, we didn't plan this. It happened. Their eyes met and for a long moment they just looked at each other, the world around them seeming to fade. It was Thomas who took the decisive step, closing the distance between them. Their lips met in a kiss that began hesitantly but quickly deepened with a suppressed passion. When they finally parted, the silence that enveloped them was of a different kind, a silence of understanding and acceptance of the consequences of their actions. Oh, what are we going to do? Sophia asked, her voice trembling. I, I don't know. I just know that I can't stay away from you now, not after this," Thomas confessed, his voice reflecting the intensity of his emotions. Sophia felt her heart weigh heavily with the reality of his words. They had crossed a line that would change everything forever. The implications were enormous, not just for them, but especially for William, who remained unaware of the emotional earthquake occurring beneath his room. Uh, and now, she murmured, more to herself than to him. And no matter what we decide, Thomas replied, holding her hand firmly. I will be by your side. 
That night, as William slept and the house lay in silence, Sophia and Thomas faced the reality of their choices, knowing that the path ahead would be one of the most difficult they had ever walked. The days following the kiss between Sophia and Thomas were laden with palpable tension. Both knew they could not ignore the consequences of their actions, nor continue living in the shadow of a secret that threatened to collapse the fragile balance of their lives. On a gray morning, while William watched television in the living room, Thomas found Sophia in the kitchen, his eyes revealing the weight of an imminent decision. Ah uh, Sophia, we need to talk, Thomas began, his voice firm but low. Ah uh, what happened between us? I don't regret it, but we can't continue like this. It's not fair to William. Sophia, whose hands trembled slightly as she held her coffee cup, nodded, the gravity of the situation reflected in her expression. I know, Thomas. I feel the same. We can't let this continue. It's, it's too much. I've thought a lot, and the only solution I see is to leave my job here, Thomas said, each word weighing heavily on him like lead. I can't be so close without, without wanting to be with you. And that's not right while I'm under the same roof as William. Shock and pain were evident on Sophia's face. But, Thomas, you are the best thing that has happened for William's recovery. How can I ask you to leave? I, I am a professional, Sophia, but I am also a man, and my feelings for you are affecting my ability to maintain that professionalism. It wouldn't be ethical to continue, he explained, the decision clear in his eyes despite the pain it caused. Sophia set the cup down on the table with a small click, the sound highlighting the silence that followed. Uh, and what are we going to do, she asked, her voice faltering. I'm not sure. I just know that I can't stay, Thomas replied. Uh, maybe it's for the best. It gives us time to, to think about what we really want. The idea of distancing herself from Thomas filled Sophia with deep sadness, but she knew he was right. They needed space to understand what those emotions meant, away from the complications of being together every day. You're right, as Sophia agreed, tears beginning to form in her eyes. It's the right thing to do. For William, for us, for everything that is right. Thomas approached, holding her hands between his. I, I never wanted to cause pain to anyone, especially you. Please believe that. I believe you, Thomas. And thank you, for being so honest, for being so honorable, Sophia said, allowing herself a moment of vulnerability. That day, Thomas prepared everything for his departure, and as he said goodbye, a heavy silence fell over the house. William, oblivious to the emotional turmoil unfolding, merely nodded his head, thanking Thomas for his services. After Thomas's departure, the house seemed strangely empty and quiet. Sophia felt the weight of the void left by him, and as she looked at William, who continued his routine, she wondered about the choices we make for love and the tortuous paths the heart decides to follow. It was a moment of deep reflection on the pain and beauty of human feelings, a chapter that closed with difficult decisions and broken hearts. Thomas's departure left a palpable emptiness in the house and in Sophia's heart. Every corner of the residence seemed to echo memories of shared moments, each carrying a sweet bitterness. Sophia felt dazed, lost between what she should feel and what she truly felt. On a cloudy afternoon, while Sophia was helping William with his rehabilitation, he noticed the sadness weighing on her. Ah uh, Sophia you seem distant. Is everything okay? He asked, his voice weak but concerned. She smiled sadly forcing a lighter tone. I'm fine, William. Just tired I guess. William held her hand, looking directly into her eyes. You've never been good at lying to me. If something is wrong I would like to know. You don't have to carry this alone. William's words were like a permission that Sophia didn't know she needed. Feeling a knot forming in her throat, she finally vented. It's Thomas, he decided he could no longer work here. He felt that, that our feelings were complicating things. The confession visibly shook William. He released her hand, staring into nothing for a moment before speaking. I understand. It's not easy I imagine. But it's the right thing. We can't live in a way that we'll regret later. Sophia felt a mix of relief and pain seeing the understanding on William's face. I'm sorry, she murmured, for everything. I know, a William replied, and I feel it too. Maybe, maybe it's a sign that we need to think about what we really want for our future. 
perhaps there are decisions we need to make. The days that followed were filled with deep reflection. Sophia spent long hours looking out the window, thinking about her life with William, the happy moments and the challenges they faced together. She also thought about Thomas, the man who had inadvertently unleashed a torrent of feelings and desires forgotten or never before recognized. One morning after a restless night, Sophia made a decision. She found William in the living room where he was reading the newspaper and sat down beside him. A oh, William, we need to talk about us, about our future, she began, her voice firm but filled with emotion. William put the newspaper aside, his expression serious. I was expecting this. What have you decided? Sophia took a deep breath. I love you, William, and I always will. But I feel that. I feel that I need some time for myself. There are things I need to discover about who I am and what I really want. William nodded, painfully aware of the honesty in her words. I, I never wanted to hold you to a life that isn't fully yours. If you need this time, I understand. I just want you to be happy, Sophia, even if it means being away from me. I, I don't know if I'm making the right choice, as Sophia confessed, tears starting to stream down her face. But I feel that I need to explore these feelings, understand what they mean to me. William, with great effort, reached for her hand. I support you, Sophia. I've always supported you. And I will always love you, no matter where you are or what you decide to do. With this difficult conversation, Sophia felt a mix of liberation and sadness. She knew that the steps ahead would not be easy, but she also understood that it was necessary to confront these issues to truly live the life she felt was hers. The weeks following the decisive conversation between Sophia and William were marked by a sense of freedom mixed with deep melancholy. Sophia packed her things, each item carrying memories of a life shared, dreams built together, and a love that, although true, was no longer enough to fill her restless spirit. On a warm and windy afternoon, while Sophia was packing her last boxes, Thomas appeared at the door. He had heard about her decision to leave and needed to see how she was. A Sophia, are you okay? He asked, the concern evident in his voice. She stopped what she was doing, wiping the sweat from her forehead with the back of her hand. I'm trying to be. It's a mix of feelings, you know? I'm anxious about what's to come, but leaving everything behind isn't easy. Thomas stepped forward, hesitantly. I'm sorry for everything that happened. If I had... Sophia interrupted, raising her hand. Uh... No, Thomas. It wasn't your fault. We both know things happened because they had to happen. There are no regrets, just, just the need to move forward. They shared a meaningful look, both aware of the choices they had made and the consequences those choices brought. Uh, what do you plan to do now? Thomas asked, changing the subject, trying to bring some lightness to the moment. Sophia smiled, a sad but sincere smile. I'm going to travel a bit. I've always wanted to see the world, you know? And then, then I'll try to figure out what I really want from my life." Thomas nodded. You deserve to find your happiness, Sophia. And if you need anything, know that I'm here. Thank you, Thomas. That means a lot to me, she responded. And you, how will you be? Uh, me? Well, I'll continue my work. Helping people, it's what I do best. Maybe, in time, I'll also find a new beginning." They embraced, a long and tight hug, charged with everything they had shared and all that they still hoped for the future. When they parted, both felt that a chapter of their lives was closing, making room for new stories to be written. Take care, Sophia. And don't forget that wherever you go, you have a friend who cares, Thomas said, with an encouraging smile. I care too, and you will always be my friend, Thomas. Thank you for everything," Sophia replied, with tears in her eyes. When Thomas left, Sophia took one last look at the house that she once called home. She felt strangely light, as if she was finally breathing after a long time. She closed the door behind her, her steps firm and determined.